The desk. You know it. You love it. You may even have one yourself. A lot of people tend to ask me about my desk setup, what kind of stuff I use for streaming and my general creative endeavors. So I thought I'd give you a tour of my desk setup and then the next time someone asks, I can just direct them to this video. I will say right at the top, I don't think I have the most aesthetically pleasing desk, but it is as functional as it can be to suit my needs. And so I have surrounded myself with the things that I find most essential to me to get the things done that I need to do. Let's start with this big wide bad boy. This is the Samsung 49 inch ultra wide 5K monitor. I actually got this because I was trying to simplify my desk, believe it or not. I've always been a little skeptical of curved TVs, but a curved monitor that you sit about a foot away from, now that's interesting. And it actually does work and it feels really great. Especially when I'm working in art programs like Blender or Premiere Pro where I wanna just have everything on screen at once. So full screen apps, or windows scattered about. Everything just feels so seamless and simple. And simple is the key word. I want, I want simple. One monitor to rule them all. Plus playing Stardew Valley on it feels incredible. I mean, just look at that field of view, get it? Field of, you know what, Never mind. No point in having a monitor if you don't have anything to plug it into. This is my NZXT tower. Is that how you say it or is it next? Either way, that is my tower, which may seem a little small and unassuming, but do not be fooled. Considering its smaller stature, its guts, its innards really pack a beefy punch. For anyone who cares, here are the specs of the computer, which is all gray and everything, but the best part about it is my CPU caller does this. Bobby, baby, Bobby, booby. This is a Nintendo Switch. Don't know if you've heard of them. My dad works in Nintendo, he hooked me up. I like to have a spare dock in here so I can just plonk my Switch in and get going. And the cool thing actually about playing console games on this monitor is you can customize it with split screen, however you want. I have a camera sitting just above the monitor for filming and streaming. I use a Sony a7S III for streaming, which is overkill, but I have the camera anyway, so I just Plop it up there and it can get to work. Sitting atop this large felt mat is a Razer mouse and a Steel Series keyboard. I feel like I go through computer mice so quickly. They just keep dying on me. To be fair, Fuji did attack my previous mouse. Feels appropriate, cat versus mouse, you know. And it's so hard to find a good gaming mouse because so many of them look like cheese graters. I don't know what that's all about but I don't like it. I used to use a full-size Razer keyboard with a numpad, which arguably I should really still be using for Blender purposes, but I'm getting on just fine with this one. I really like that it's a little smaller. It takes up less space on the desk, and it also has a very satisfying clicky-clack, which is vital. To the right of my keyboard is an Elgato Stream Deck. This has got a bunch of pre-programmed stream-related shortcuts and quick access to a bunch of fun music and sound effects and things like that. Particularly when I'm streaming, I like to put on a bit of a show, come up with silly bits on the floor. So having access to music like this at the push of a button, it helps keep things moving, it keeps it fun. If you are a streamer, a stream deck will be your best friend. You don't have to get the extra large one. Elgato do other stream decks with varying functionality. I just like the big one because me likey many buttons. Over to the left, I have a Go XLR, which is really great for streaming, but also good for everyday general use. PJ, what does it do? Well, Reverberant Watcher, it does many things. Mostly, it takes the sound from your computer and it separates it into four different channels, which can be controlled with these sliders. It's very helpful for adjusting the sound of your microphone or the game or your music, whatever you want. It's highly customizable. I will say it's slightly too big for my liking. There is a smaller version of it, but it emits these buttons here. And I need these buttons because when I press them, they go. I've got three Elgato key lights which illuminate my face when I'm streaming or filming. You can adjust their temperature and their brightness so you can get the exact look you want. Also, speaking of lighting, it's very subtle, but I have a Philips Hue bar sitting behind the monitor which blasts some color against the wall. It makes for a nice bit of backlighting when the lights are all off and you're in here at night gaming in the dark. Mm. It's nice, it's cozy, I like it. My microphone is a Shure SM7B sitting on a Rode arm. It's a pretty standard podcasting and streaming microphone. You've probably seen a ton of people with them. And it's been really good to me. I really like it a lot. It's powered with phantom power, so it goes straight into the Go XLR with an XLR cable. And it also passes through this little device called a cloud lifter. If you've ever bought this microphone and you found that it lacks some of the punch you were hoping for, you might want to look into the cloud lifter. It's a little device that basically boosts the gain of your microphone without sacrificing the 
the quality of it. It's super helpful. When I don't have my headphones plugged in, I've got these Bose speakers hooked up. They're not the beefiest speakers in the world, but then I didn't need anything super boom, boom, boom. I just needed something simple that sounded good and could sit out of the way. They're so good that I bought them as a birthday present for somebody. The quality of them for what I would consider to be very affordable for speakers is really, really high. So I would really recommend these. Every desk needs some little bits. I don't really like unnecessary clutter. So my little bits are just the things that I use regularly. Post-it notes. I need to remind myself of things all of the time. And the best way for me to do that is to scribble it down on this note and stick it somewhere that I will see. A pack of official Kick the PJ playing cards. Why do I have playing cards on my desk, you may ask? Well, very regularly over on my Twitch streams, we like to play a little card game called Higher or Lower, where the chat has to predict if the next card will be higher or lower. Nine, ooh. I'm thinking higher. I'm just feel. I'm feeling higher. It's seven, it's okay. I designed these cards myself, which I'm super proud of. 52 unique designs, so if you would like a pack for yourself, kickthepj.com to get your very own pack. Of course, I have the legendary train whistle. I bought this for like, $4.99 on a whim at a garden center in the section that sells those kids toys. And I have got a ridiculous amount of mileage out of this. More than I ever expected. A word of warning, however, do not take this to a train station and start tooting. That is illegal. I also have a little fidget cube knocking about. When my hands aren't on my keyboard, I like to have something in my hands to spin or flick or fiddle with. So sometimes a pen, sometimes this cube. Very satisfying. Finally, the desk itself. This is from Ikea, except it's not a desk. It's a kitchen worktop. This is quite a popular thing to do these days. I wanted a desk that was a very specific size for this office, which can be a bit difficult to actually get. So I got creative. I bought a kitchen worktop. I screwed five legs onto it. Yes, five. It's a very wide and heavy, heavy desk. So having a fifth leg in the middle to help support it is mandatory. <laughs> basically, unless you want your desk to cave in whilst you're streaming. I don't want that. That's my desk, that's my setup. It's a really great space that I find I can just sit at and get on with art, streaming, filming, writing, editing, gaming, whatever I wanna do, I feel like I can do it at this desk. It has been curated to my needs specifically. And I really do wanna stress, I have been slowly upgrading and buying and tinkering for years. Some of it's been gifted to me, some of it I've bought for a specific project, and it's all come together in this way to suit my specific needs. So what I'm getting at is you don't necessarily need all of this or any of this, in fact, to make art or stream or edit or whatever you wanna do. This is a result of doing all of this for many, many years. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions, do let me know and I'll try my best to answer it. Thanks very much for watching this video. Stay rad and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Fish on.